Pastel is a unique form of graphic art that combines line and color, and is distinct from both drawing and painting. The bloom of pigments on the surface of the support creates a direct connection with the material and pure colors, resulting in a visually stimulating and sensory appeal. The art of pastel is diverse, with a range of techniques from undulating and striped lines to hatching. Pastel is particularly versatile, making it ideal for creating textured and trompe-l'oeil effects and rendering the velvety texture of skin. While the technique was popular in the 18th century with artists like Rosalba Carriera, Maurice Quentin de Latour, and Chardin, who were known as pastel painters, it fell out of fashion before experiencing a revival in the mid-19th century. Pastel art expanded beyond portraiture and was used for any subject matter, as evidenced by the exhibition of 95 notable works from the Musée d'Orsay collection. During the 17th century, Pastel art flourished and gained its reputation during the 18th century, which is commonly regarded as its golden age. This medium, unique in its ability to create textured effects and portray the softness of skin, was primarily used for portraits during this time. However, it was set aside during the French Revolution, only to make a strong comeback in the latter half of the 19th century, leading to a revival of portraiture. The bourgeoisie, eager to assert their new position in society, were particularly fond of pastel portraits. Artists such as Émile Lévy, Jacques-Émile Blanche, and Louise Breslau followed in the grand tradition of portrait painting, using pastel art to compete with oil painting. They employed the exceptional versatility of the medium to accentuate the opulence of interiors or the delicacy of fabrics. In contrast, Manet preferred head-and-shoulder portraits with simplified lines to capture the quintessential, Parisienne, woman. In the mid-19th century, pastel art expanded to encompass all genres. Jean-Francois Millet utilized this technique to portray the grandeur of rural life in his paintings. Some critics, such as Joris Karl Huysmans, actually preferred Millet's pastels over his oils, describing the artist as an illusory and expressive master of the earth, who has deeply felt nature and depicted it with gravity and eloquence. Although Millet was a trailblazer in this regard, he was not the only artist to take an interest in rural workers. The decision to depict these new subjects coincided with a time when the rural exodus was amplified in the aftermath of the Industrial Revolution. The nostalgia for a traditional way of life that was once believed to be eternal began to emerge. The labor of harvesters and fishermen was often portrayed in a heroic or picturesque manner. Many pastel artists were captivated by the traditional clothing and headwear worn by Breton women, and sought to immortalize them in their vibrant shades of royal blue, bright yellow, and white.
Emile Verheron, a poet of the 19th century, described it as the era of sprawling towns, which expanded as rural areas depopulated. The Impressionists found new subjects in abundance in the urban population, cityscapes, workers' lives, leisure society, and entertainment world. They rejected history painting and aimed to observe daily life truthfully. Pastel became a popular technique for capturing this dynamic world. Eugene Boudin, who Monet credited with opening his eyes, led the way with his open-air studies, which Charles Baudelaire described as sketched so fast and so faithfully from what is the most variable, the most elusive in its form and color. While Degas produced a few pastel landscapes, he took a keen interest in women's labor. The Goncourt brothers wrote in their journal that this artist who is infatuated with all things modern had turned his focus to washerwomen and dancers. He tirelessly observed them in their daily activities from a distance, without making judgments on their social status. Pastels are a convenient medium for artists who wish to work outdoors due to their small size and ease of portability. They are an excellent tool for capturing the changing atmosphere and lighting effects quickly, combining line and color in a single stroke. The use of pastels in landscape art dates back to the early 19th century, as demonstrated by Elizabeth V. G. Le Brun, who created around 200 pastel landscapes during her visit to Switzerland in 1807. Other artists, including Delacroix and Eugene Boudin, followed her lead in sketching skies with pastels. However, these works were typically regarded as studies or souvenirs rather than exhibition pieces. Artists such as Pierre Prince, Ernest Dux, and Henri Gervex pursued a nature-based approach, striving for authenticity in their work as Boudin and the Impressionists did. Their pastels are characterized by a lively touch and vigorous handling. However, the fragility and softness of the pastel medium can also lend landscapes an otherworldly quality, which symbolist artists like Levi Dermer and Ripple Rone took advantage of. During the final decades of the 19th century, pastel artists began exploring new subjects, including the domestic sphere. Portraiture also became more intimate and informal, often reflecting a particular mood. With household and family life occupying a central position in bourgeois values, artists began to focus on daily life and indoor scenes. This subject matter was particularly popular among female artists, who were still largely associated with domestic life during that time. Pastel was a medium that was particularly well suited to women due to its reputation for being clean and its ease of use. This leisurely art form enjoyed significant popularity until the 1880s when it gained unprecedented popularity among all artists. According to the Grande Encyclopedia in 1885, pastel can be taken up and left aside, maintaining all the freshness of its luster and the bloom of its velvetiness throughout the work process. As a result, it became the medium of choice for creating snapshots of everyday life.
When it comes to capturing the velvety texture of skin and subtle complexion tones, pastels are the ideal medium. This is why they are popular for both portrait and nude art. Edouard Manet, Maurice Dennis, and Emile René Menard used blending techniques to give their models' skin a powdery glow. In contrast, Degas employed a wide variety of lines and vivid colors to add dimension to his bathing women, avoiding idealized depictions of their bodies. Degas's portrayal of bathing women is intimate, with the impression that they are unaware of being observed. He compares them to Susanna, a heroine from the Old Testament who was secretly watched by the elders. Some of his bathers are depicted as though they are being watched through a slightly open door, while others are seen from bold high-angle views. In contrast, head and shoulders nudes by Manet and Amandine differ significantly. Manet's subjects maintain direct eye contact with the viewer, while Amandine's nude acknowledges the observer's presence. The 19th century was marked by political instability and significant societal change. The Industrial Revolution and the rapid expansion of railways disrupted people's perceptions of time and space. Toward the end of the century, there was a fear of a collapse of civilization, much like that of the Roman Empire. In response to this crisis of values and in opposition to the prevailing materialism, some artists rejected contemporary subjects and turned to Arcadian idealism. This ancient dream envisioned a simple life in harmony with nature, untouched by time. Osbert, for example, sought to achieve simplicity itself supreme silence and developed a pantheistic, mystical vision filled with muses, which formed the foundation of his oeuvre. In contrast, Degas's art portrayed an atypical theme of women bathers on grass and their potential symbiosis with nature. Finally, Desvalier's and Rothenstein's idyllic land of Arcadia was not without strangeness and a sense of foreboding, as if shaken by the first quakes of the approaching 20th century.
Levi Dermer often explored inner life through portraiture and the human figure, even depicting hybrid beings like his famous Medusa. On the other hand, Redon used the plasticity of pastel to give shape to his imagination and infuse myths with a personal dimension, moving away from allegory. His art was characterized by indeterminacy, and he allowed himself to be guided by the materials. Artists of the 19th century did not solely seek utopian ideals in Arcadia. Odilon Redon and Lucien Levy Dermer also searched for inner truth and expressed their rich imagination through pastel using their unique visual language. Following in the footsteps of Millet and Degas, these great pastelists reinvented the medium towards the end of the century.